uh, term one ending board exam next month, which is just a few days left. And uh, this is pertaining to life processes. So uh, in case study type of questions, you will have a passage which may be based on a context or it may be based on a tabulation or a graph or it may be uh, based on a real life situation and it will be followed by multiple choice questions. So uh, you may not actually get the answer from the passage, but the questions will definitely be based on that particular concept. So uh, let's look at the passage here. Digestion is a catabolic process in which complex and large components of food are broken down into their respective simpler and smaller forms with the help of various hydrolytic enzymes. In humans, the process of intake of essential nutrients in the form of food takes place through an entire system known as digestive system. The digestive system in humans include alimentary canal and its associated digestive glands. This is the passage given to you and it's clear that it is uh, related to the digestion process. All right. So identify the cells whose secretion protects the lining of gastrointestinal tract from various enzymes. All of us know that the gastric lining in the gastric glands, acid is produced, which is hydrochloric acid. So if the gastric lining is not protected, the acid can cause harm to the gastric lining. All right. So the question says, which type of cells protect the gastric lining? Now, these are your options. Duodenal cells, chief cells, goblet cells, oxyntic cells. Now, all of them have some purpose to perform. Oxyntic cells produce the acid, the hydrochloric acid in the gastric cavity. Goblet cells are also called mucus cells. They produce the mucus. Chief cells produces the pepsinogen enzyme. Pepsinogen is an inactive form which will be activated to pepsin which acts on the proteins. Duodenal cells secrete bicarbonate into the lumen, which actually neutralizes the acidity in the chyme, which comes from the stomach. All right. So out of all these cells, goblet cells are the ones which are also called mucus cells. They secrete mucus and mucus forms an entire you know, it covers the inner lining of the gastric cavity and thus it protects it from the various enzymes and also the acid. So the right answer should be goblet cells. Yes, they are present throughout the epithelium of the gastric glands. They secrete mucus, which protects the gastrointestinal lining from the enzymatic action. So let's move on to the next question. Digestion of proteins is incomplete in the absence of enterokinase. Enterokinase is an intestinal enzyme because these are the four options given to you. Trypsinogen is not converted to trypsin. Pepsinogen is not converted to pepsin. Prorenin is not converted into renin. Chymotrypsinogen is not converted to chymotrypsin. Now, you must understand, children, this is an intestinal enzyme. Pepsinogen and pro-renin, they are present in the stomach. Pepsinogen is an inactive form which will be converted into pepsin in the stomach. But this enzyme is in the intestine. So we can eliminate option B. Same way, pro-renin is converted to renin. It is present in the gastric cavity of infants. So it helps in the digestion of milk protein casein. It helps in the curdling of milk. So this also is in the gastric cavity. C option also can be eliminated. Now we are left with A and D. 
if you have read in details you will understand that enterokinase first converts trypsinogen into trypsin and trypsin converts chymotrypsinogen into chymotrypsin which finally acts on the proteins and converts it into peptides okay so the correct option should be a enterokinase actually converts trypsinogen into trypsin so the if enterokinase is absent trypsinogen will not be converted into trypsin that's the right answer if there is no trypsin chymotrypsinogen also will not be converted into chymotrypsin but enterokinase first catalyzes a conversion of trypsinogen into trypsin all right you got to match the column 1 with column 2 and 3 so column 1 gives you the substrate column 2 gives you the enzymes column 3 gives you the product all right so see you must note that the substrates have the suffix ose and the corresponding enzyme would have the suffix ase so it's like lactase would act on lactose galactase would act on galactose you know fructase would act on fructose like that so substrate has the suffix ose and enzyme ase now we got to match here lactose so as i told you it should match with c and uh, this is the milk milk sugar which will be catalyzed by the enzyme lactase to convert it into galactose which is a disaccharide fatty acid will be acted upon by lipase and converted into glycerol in the digestion of fat you can recollect starch will be acted upon by amylase you know it is present in the saliva and also secreted by the pancreas so fatty acids oh sorry starch will be acted upon by amylase and the end product would be maltose this is another disaccharide okay proteins will be acted upon by trypsin the enzyme of the pancreas and converted into dipeptides so that's how you will have to choose the correct option over here the right answer is c c1 lactose c is lactase 1 is galactose fatty acid lipase glycerol starch amylase maltose proteins trypsin dipeptides so c is the right option over here let's move on to the next question see all the questions are based on the digestion process look at this graph the x axis gives you a ph now this you have even studied in chemistry you must know 7 is neutral ph less than 7 is acidic more than 7 is alkaline you have the activity of enzyme over here so enzyme a works maximum at low ph that means see it is maximum activity at about 2 or less than 2 that means this enzyme works best in acidic media whereas b is activity is at its peak at around ph 8 that means it works best in alkaline media now this much information you should understand from the graph let's look at the question a and b in the given graph are the action spectra of two enzymes the two enzymes are now you'll have to make a guess amylase and trypsin a is pepsin whatever you know first you eliminate that pepsin and trypsin we know that pepsin is in the stomach and we know that stomach has hydrochloric acid which makes the media 
acidic so pepsin should work more in acidic media same way trypsin is secreted by the pancreas and pancreatic enzymes are poured in the duodenum where the medium is alkaline so this seems correct let us look at others chymotrypsin is again in the intestine and in the duodenum the first part of small intestine where the medium is alkaline but here it shows maximum activity at in the acidic media so this can be ruled out renin is present in the stomach it will definitely not work in alkaline media in the stomach it is acidic so this is ruled out a lactate dehydrogenase b is amylase see amylase uh, works optimally at ph 7 near about 7 but here it is showing maximum activity in alkaline media so this also can be ruled out the correct answer should be b pepsin in acidic media and trypsin in uh, yes alkaline the correct answer is b both the protein digesting enzymes but both work at different locations pepsin works in the stomach Trypsin works in the duodenum or the intestine and both work at different pH. Pepsin works maximum in acidic media and trypsin require an alkaline media to work. Right. So this is the last question uh, in the series. If the inner surface of ileum in the human small intestine was smooth, we know that the small intestine is not smooth. It is rather folded and subdivided into villi. If there were no villi, if the surface of small intestine was smooth, which of the following statements would be true? That's the question. Rate of absorption of digested food molecules would be higher. This is definitely not correct because if the intestine did not have folds, the surface area of absorption of digested food would be less. So absorption of digested uh, food molecules will cannot be higher. We can eliminate this right away because the digested food would pass more easily through the digestive tract. No, that's not true. Digestion would not be as effective because there would be fewer cells secreting trypsin, a protein digesting enzyme. Okay, we are not concerned with digestion here. When we come to villi, we are talking about completion of digestion and absorption of digested food. So this option can also be ruled out. Humans would have needed to evolve a much longer small intestine to absorb sufficient nutrients from their food. This is the correct option because when there are folds present in the small intestine, a much longer small intestine is accumulated in a smaller place. But if there were no villi and no folds, then to increase the surface area for absorption of digested food, a much longer small intestine would be required. These humans would not be able to survive. No, this, is, this is also not true because the digestive tract would be more susceptible to damage. This is also not true. The right answer should be C. Humans would have needed to evolve a much longer small intestine to absorb sufficient nutrients from its food. So that was the last question of this series. Please do join One Mark family. Like, follow and subscribe One Mark Solution. These are the details on the screen you can note. Thank you very much.